Hello everyone and welcome to this more advanced video tutorial. If you're looking for something uh, along the line of how to set up aluminum production, what to do with the extra water, or same principle with um, the uh, nuclear production, for example, where you have excess of uh, sulfuric acid that you need to deal with, um, that is actually covered in my other video tutorial. This m focuses mostly on um, the in on how to take a pure node and extracting exactly 600 per minute, not almost 600 per minute. You know, like actually getting the 600, and also ex it's explained in detail. You know, I'm going to explain in detail how, like, the mechanics works for it. So, we have a situation here where you see there's oil accumulated. And uh, that's because every time that there is, um, you know, it's a simple setup. It's a single pipe. But as soon as there's a single amount of backflow happening from any of the machine or whatever like you know liquid doesn't flow in one direction right so as soon as there's the slightest amount of backflow it's gonna clog up the system even if I put a valve it's gonna do the same thing because there's a stoppage somewhere here along this line well mostly it's in this junction in particular there's a stoppage here that stoppage is gonna sort of like happen as the form of a wave, you know, like this stops the liquid here, then like as the next liquid pushes in, it's going to be stopped. Next pushes in, it's going to be stopped. And that backflows all the way to the machine and it just goes up and up every time there is a new, like it, it's a clock edge for a fraction of a second, right? So it's just going to keep accumulating in the machine. And the problem with that is we're not actually getting 600 per minute because of that. So how do you actually get 600 per minute and therefore preventing these lights from turning yellow for a fraction of a second once in a while? Well, I've actually made myself a little blueprint. Very simple design. So I'm just going to put it down here and explain what it is. So, first of, you obviously need to connect this. Um, so, first of, the, the liquid is going to flow in. I would rather have it like this. There we go. Okay. Yeah, because that way you can see it here. Um, so, the liquid is going to flow in. There is plenty of head lift to reach the first valve. Now, the valve will prevent gravity from creating a backflow because liquid always go down to the first point first right so this prevents gravity from creating a backflow then it goes toward the first junction and splits into what is most likely going to be 300 one side 300 the other side might not be exactly that which is why we have another pipe here for load balancing. If I need 400 on one side, 200 on the other, uh, this pipe is going to help with that. And then these valves will prevent backflow to happen all the way back to the first junction as gravity will prevent the liquid from flowing back. It's actually like once, let's say that I have like this, let's say that I have this pipe going here. Um, once this is filled up and completely, it's going to clog up the system and that clog edge is going to be felt back all the way to the junction. Then the liquid is going to be diverted back into the other junction. Now, the, the part of the liquid is still being used here, right? So... Um, it's not going to be a 100% cluggage, but in this particular case, uh, that means I'm using 150 pure, uh, crude oil uh, because these are uh, uh, they're they're power sharded 
to 75H. So that's 150 here. So that means 450 is going to flow into that pipe. Now 450 in one pipe, that's totally fine. Not going to be a problem. So technically I can do this. It's going to work just fine. And it's never going to clog the system. Now there is accumulation from earlier. But if we look at it now, it's not going to clog. It's going to keep flowing um, 600 forever. It's a very simple blueprint that I that I made, and you can make yours as well. It's very very simple. Um, the most important part is to prevent the backflow at any point, and you want to split that pipe as soon as possible. So, just a f you know just a little connection here, and then bang, split right away. Make sure that you. So essentially, you wanna, you, you don't wanna have 600 tr going through one pipe, because yeah, that's when you create issues. But yeah, as you can see here, it's still empty, and it's gonna stay like that forever. Um, I have that system being used in multiple areas in this map, and it's been going for quite a number of hours at this point and it's working perfectly uh, I suspect that it would actually be possible without the first valve um, I think it might still work without it but I like the system works I'm not gonna change it if you need to have a head lift after these two valves uh, what I suggest is to just like build the pipes a little bit longer, replace the valves with uh, pumps. And what I noticed is you need to have the same pump on each side. That would be, I'm not sure why, but yeah, it, it, it actually has an effect on the game for some reason. It might be one of those obscure mechanic that it shouldn't, but it does kind of thing so that's just my advice if you're going to replace these by um, uh, you know pipeline pumps one or two then yeah make sure that you actually replace these uh, by the same on both sides even if you don't need them on both sides so now next I want to show you something I've done with gravity This one is actually a work in progress, which is why you're going to see a lot of yellow lights. Uh, but the principle still applies. Uh, in this pipe, I had 480 heavy oil residue. Uh, diluted fuel takes 50 each, which means after this pipe, I had 30 extra leftover. Um, and on the other side here, I have something similar where it's 320. Uh, so after all the, uh, after six blenders, I had 20 extra leftovers. And so the extra 30 and extra 20 merges up together into this blender. But I'm working with something very multi-level here. Uh, it's a very very big refinery so I can't uh, afford to have too much backflow it could break some machines um, so what I did you can see this is like the highest point on this pipe and the highest point on that pipe as well and it is the same height but this pipe connecting them is on purpose a little bit higher up since liquid will flow whatever is lower first, uh, gravity here acts as a smart splitter. So you essentially have everything being filled and then any overflow will actually go through this pipe, reaching the other side here. And then in this case, it's fine because at this point, there is only a total of 150 liquid, so I can just keep it flat and no problem. 
So, um, that's a neat little example, you know, to, you can use gravity as a smart splitter for liquid. Uh, I have one more example I would like to show you. All right, now here we are at uh, one of my aluminum production factories. I This was kind of an experimental build, but it actually works. It works totally fine, so I wanted to show you what I did. Um, I don't like using valves. I had very bad experiences with valves all the time. They always they, they don't work on me. Uh, like, if you're going to use a valve, always, in my opinion, always use them at 100 capacity. If you start reducing the capacity of the valve, that's where they break. Uh, maybe it's got fixed since then, but I've only had bad experiences. So, this is what I did. Uh, because I didn't want it to have, you know, uh, this is something that I talk about in my other video where you you are producing you know here you are producing 120 water um, plus you need to have like an extra 80 so that's a total of 200 for one set and I have a lot of sets here in this factory um, I didn't want it to have you know something like eight pipes going through it so what I did was I have um, I actually we can see them here. I have a bunch of pumps here in the back. Those are the pumps that bring water to the factory. Um, and they only run on two pipes. And so every, every output of aluminum water here feeds directly into the input here. But using gravity, so using gravity, I prevent that water from backflowing. And then only the water necessary comes in without any pumps. What happens essentially is the water in this pipe is saturated, right? Which means the water in this pipe is also saturated. But the flow rate of this pipe doesn't go above 300 because there is no there there's not enough water in total in this pipe considering all the machines together to exceed the flow so because of gravity this doesn't create a backflow so it doesn't create an issue in this pipe so there can still be uh, a good amount of water here flowing uh, on average, I believe this one is 480. I'm not sure. I, one of them is 480, the other one is less. I'm not sure which is which. Um, but yeah, so instead of using a valve, I just use gravity. And no issue there. Like, you don't need to rely on valves. Just think about what goes down first. And something that's important to note as well is that this pipe, once it starts feeding into the machines, is completely horizontal the whole way. Same thing for the other one. Um, the, the other one starts being horizontal like after this weird hook here. Um, so because the pipe is horizontal, it is being distributed to every access point equally. And that's how I regulate the flow without using valves. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to talk about. If you have more questions, I would be happy to create a third video and answer them in that. Um, and until then, you know, uh, you can come see me on my Twitch channel. It's linked in my profile. If not, uh, have a good one. All right. See you later. Moo.